Welcome back fellow armchair generals, this is Gamer1745 here with my continuing playthrough of Hearts of Iron through you with Black Ice 8.6. Okay, um, let's see, I wanted to show you, let's click here, I think, yes, there's Ober Commando, um, everything going on here, let's click right there on the green bar, and it will show you, and I'll we'll go over to, well, maybe this would be better, there we go. Um, show you all the subunits there, but the main thing I wanted to show you is my current um, movement orders. These are orders, not plans. This isn't the um, what we use here of the um, uh, show battle plans. So all these units will attempt to follow out these orders until they are unable to, or I change them. Um, notice nothing's going in the swamp, but there's nothing in the swamp at the moment, so um, I would love it to be able to um, not have to fight there. I hate fighting there. And the whole key to this operation is complete Soviet unpreparedness. Um, I don't think we would be strong enough if we were facing, if the Soviets had... Um, Got enough warning, you know, have a threat level we can click. Let's go diplomacy here. Down the bottom. Soviet Union highest threat ha is and sort of had been, obviously we've invaded, um, Japan. So they counted them as a greater threat here. So we will see on how they move their forces. Now, we have some decisions to make. Foreign recruitment. Um, Indian um, Sikh there, I believe. So he doesn't have a beard. Um, national manpower up, but supplies, leadership modifier. I don't know what a leadership modifier. Land organization I get is that we're sort of um, just getting in all kinds of people. Like, hey, everybody who wants to like show up can sort of join up and also um, you'll have language difficulties I'm sure because even um, even if you're grouping most of your okay here's 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 the thing um, there was most assuredly um, as you can sort of see the guy there in the German uniform with uh, as hind badge there that was a German attempt to create an Indian based um, units that I don't even know that they would speak significant English because I I think a lot of the Indian units didn't um, could be wrong on that but I I think a lot of them weren't um, fluent on that so you're gonna have a um, maybe a maybe a cohesive unit within itself and you're gonna have how many German officers that speak Hindi or some other Urdu or whatever some of the other Indian languages are um, and so you're gonna have a, a potential command problem but that isn't the majority of who joins um, the German army Germany very very quickly on the invasion of the Soviet Union well let not let me change it the German army very very quickly on the invasion of the Soviet Union started picking up volunteers and in an ad hoc way and it in a way it's incredible um how often do you invade somebody and then um less uh, at least weeks months now within weeks but maybe even within hours of starting the invasion you're going oh hey you former enemies you want to you want to um help us out here sure no problem you're no longer prisoners of war. You're now our, our allies. And it was literally almost that fast. They started accepting um, Russian volunteers in um, German service. Um, they ha even have um, armbands. Some of them are yellow with black writing um, and several other um, stuff and going very quickly. And that they would be wearing their Russian uniform presumably generally with um, uh, unit badges or whatever removed 
And the reason they would continue wearing the Russian uniform is that there just wasn't German uniforms available for them. In Because I'm talking right within the division as it's moving forward. This isn't, hey, you know, recruiting poster, join up, you know, go to your local, local recruiting thing and we're going to send you back west to some base in Germany and form up new units. Now, they did do that at some point. But early on, it's just like, hey, this um, division, battalion, whatever, picking up volunteers. So they didn't have excess uniforms to give to the people. There was a um, a fair number of guys that were given um, German jackets. Um, theoretically, they were supposed to have um, the German army eagle removed from it, though you see often pictures of a group of foreign um, soldiers standing, you know, a group of like six guys. Two or three of them have the army eagles removed. Two or three still have them there, all within the same unit. So it varies, but that was sort of supposed to mean that you're in the German army. And so that they would be given jackets and they would, um, partially because it's cold at night and things like that, um, they would still keep their Soviet jackets on underneath and definitely wearing Soviet trousers and, and whatnot. At first, these um, people were in non-combat roles. They were um, logistics troops. You know, you see all the, you know, the, the idea of the wagons moving forward with the supplies. That's what these guys were doing. A lot of them... Um, were given over to artillery units to help handle the shells and move the artillery guns around to um, reduce the, the needs of German manpower to do that, to keep all of that flowing. So at first they weren't um, trusted or given guns. And this got to be such a big problem that there was um, a cap put on, a percentage cap. I forget what it was, 20%? 20% of your unit, you can't go over 20% of your unit strength in, in um, former Soviet volunteers. And I would say that meaning that they weren't all Russian, because some of these were thought to be um, fairly reliable ethnic groups that were um, anti-Russian. That's some of the reasons why they got trusted very quickly. But um, former Soviet soldiers, and these aren't also um, other recruits. These are mostly Soviet soldiers that are switching sides. So, but as time goes on, they take on more and more of a combat role until there's a whole um, uh, Soviet, um, or well, no, Russian army, um, the, what is it, ROA? Um, I'm sorry if I'm messing that up. Now, call that an army, yeah, but it was never, um, and it was intended, even though you... Um, uh, well, it starts with a V. The, no, I can say half the Russian names do, but the general, put, the Russian general, put in charge of it. It was never um, organized in in large scale formations. There were a few divisions that was army in scale, like a like you know. Um, not just army as in a national army, but as in, you know, um, division, corps, army, army group, theater, you know. Um, it was ar an army in scale, but they distinctly kept the units um, spread out. Um, and like I said, there were a few um, Russian divisions, but, m but even there, a lot of times they kept the brigades and other units spread out as supporting attachments to German units. So even once they sort of got everything organized, they didn't trust it. They didn't um, trust it to like form a, a section of the front that they would fight hard and hold. Um, but so, and so that a lot of this stuff happens, which is sort of fascinating. But um, so yes, we're going, so, so with that, and the idea that you have a, let's say, a well-drilled drill, um, artillery battery as part, you know, set up for a division. Bring in a bunch of Russians that don't speak German. Now, they may be very anti-Bolshevik, anti-communist. Um, maybe the men are anti-Russian in that they're Ukrainians or they're um, 
Estonians or Lithuanians that have been drafted into the army once the occupation happened. You know, so like, again, like, oh, hey, we just got a bunch of Estonians here that, um, and there was a bunch that, um, though a lot of them had been, um, tens of thousands of military age men were taken from the Baltic states. Um, I'm thinking like, I'm just saying here, but I'm probably wrong. 60,000 plus military age men that were taken and um, were just sent east um, to gulags. To um, you know, These were mostly construction work gulags, but um, they didn't want them in the Baltic states to cause trouble. So they just depopulated of these young men um, early on. Uh, we do know that um, some, though, were at different stages drafted into the Soviet army. But so if you show up and, oh, hey, you know, and everyone believes that you're an Estonian and you hate, you know, the, the Germans are going to, yeah, oh, you, you hate your, your invaders. So some of these people were, there's very good reason to trust them that they're going to not be pro the enemy. And they may even be enthusiastic and willing to fight so long as it's, you know, um, not a lost cause. But they don't necessarily speak good German either you know or whatever so so now you have a lot of um excess personnel that aren't highly trained aren't highly drilled um picking up words of german and whatnot and you know you know go pick up those shells and you know stand in the line behind the gun to, to hand you know hand up the artillery shells to, to the 105 millimeter howitzers or or whatever they're not as well drilled so that's i do fully get the idea of lowering your organization because it's such widespread leadership like i say i don't i don't necessarily agree with but uh supplies yeah just equipping them you know uniforms whatever so yep we'll go with that oh and also realize another thing within the game mechanics <coughs> excuse me um there is already occupation policies and um manpower recruitment set up in the game so by doing this is is an added bonus so it's it's um still sort of it's legitimate but having the um, penalties there are also legitimate now here we have a little bit of a different situation um the waffen ss um well before the waffen ss it was ever created when it was just the ss um, they were definitely um, recruiting Austrians into the German, you know, before Germany was, um, you know, before on Slush, sorry. Um, but it was very much all Germanic and German. And in the early days, the sort of the first real, well, eh, this is a little, a little shaky, but some of the first foreign volunteers were coming into the into it um and see some of the scandinavian norwegian stuff i'm thinking is is not quite true but um i'm trying, can't remember the exact date but some of the first into the waffen ss was um the some of the waffen ss units moving particularly through hungary and um literally almost as they're driving through through towns picking up German volunteers that are Hungarian nationals. So they started out with the Volksdeutsch, you know, the, the German folk from outside of Germany, and they were being brought in. Now, of course, none of these guys had any of the, um, oh, proof four generations or ten generations or whatever it is of good German blood. No, it was none of that. It was like, oh, you're German, you speak German, yeah, you want to join up? Yeah, cool, let's, 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 you know, we can use an extra... Um, 30 guys for our company or our battalion or whatever. And so that's sort of how it starts. There is sort of an agreement that's eventually um, reached with the army as who gets what foreign volunteer. So sort of the starts out with the sort of the Nordic nations. Um, all the volunteers there are going to go into the SS um, the German army gets sort of like, oh, French volunteers go into that. Now, eventually, the, the initial agreement, it all gets fuzzy as time goes on. But basically, if you're a Swede and you want to volunteer to fight in the um, anti-Bolshevik crusade, you have to go into the, 
the Waffen SS. Um, there's not, and I'm sure you can find um, examples where it, you know some didn't quite follow the rules. But generally speaking, you need to go into Waffen SS. So, and then of course occupational um, recruitment from you know occupied territories that were anti-Bolshevik. So a lot of these people weren't necessarily um, national socialist Nazis. Now, what does that mean to them? They, you know, that they were to some people that just meant, eh, you're an anti-communist. But there's a lot of groups. So um, now here, um, most of the non-Volksdeutsch, most, not all, um, were organized up into more national units. I tried to keep that that way. And of course, all this system starts more and more falling apart as Germany's losing on more and more fronts and um, the Waffen-SS and the army just need manpower. Oh, you're, you're willing to, to drive a truck? Yeah. Oh, you're, you know, <laughs> you know, so so the, the rules and regulations start falling apart as you're losing. But um, so, yeah, we're going to go with this. We can use the manpower. We have a bunch of other things that are pumping up some of those. Yes, we'll take the Slovakian group. I love these things. Um, this is one thing I love about Hearts of Iron 4. If you get the um, the DLCs that you can now, from your puppets, um, request um, expeditionary forces. And so you can go, hey, Slovakia, give me some troops, you know, some units. And they will. This is what I, because I, we can see that how these um, sub-nations and also other allied nations really stop contributing to the front or they do so in such bad ways that they're almost useless. So this gives some units over to my, the player's control. So, yep, we'll take that. Love these things that Black Ice did. The Carpathian army from... The Hungarians, thank you, Hungary. We'll take those guys. Army Group Romania. We'll take you as well. We're not upgrading that. We're not. I'm not doing the winter um, clothing choice. But we are going to do the Dresden Low Troop um, Transport. This just gives us um, uh, some positive effects, though obviously it will also cost us. It helps supply the network. Okay, so I wanted to cover those. My thoughts on them. Okay, here we go. Uh, we're going to deselect them. Like I've said, I have played through this part recently. One of my sort of biggest frustrations is all this trying to get these forces to um, get to the front. Okay. Now we're going to put you under that. You're the German overall command. Now what? Okay, so this is all until they sort of start occupying the provinces. But we don't get any transports. Okay, so these guys sitting down here to invade. But we do get some sh aircraft. Hmm. Split up these units. No, we aren't going to use milk. Which, let's give this guy and moving forward. Oh, no. 
if we should waste a... Okay, we can take that. And... Why are we rebasing you there? No. I wanted to rebase the... Oh well. Somehow I hit the wrong button there. We're gonna start occupying territory quickly, but let's send you just to Bunch of places, good. Now here we're not winning yet. Not that we're losing, but we don't have a general there for the second army. First army. We have oh yes, but you need to come way much further forward. Okay, who is not attacking that we should have attacked in here? Analysis fortified. Yeah, let's have Monstein. He's a fortress buster, and there's a fortress here, so. into there. Now, oh, we got, looks like we got some units down here in the swamp. I guess our air is spotting them or something. Now, uh, what does Hungry want? Well, sure, you can have energy, Hungry. That helps you out, no problem. Now that we've cleared out those forces, let's Well, I don't know, so I forget just which ones have what level of moving them at the moment. Uh oh, there's a big stack of something there. Oh, okay, looks like core headquarters. And that's something like that. Might delay some of my advance. Okay, now this is the effect of that is just throughput. Cost and supplies, but increase throughput. I hope it's useful, hope it's worth it. Yes, I'm taking this sort of Hitlerite plan that um, 
that they're just all going to collapse. Well, I don't know that they're all going to collapse. And I truly mean that. I don't know that they will or won't. But what I do sort of know is if we can't get this fast, we're going to have serious problems. And winter won't be the won't be the biggest one of them, I don't think. Okay, you're still moving forward. Okay, guys. Hoping that they'll be able to run through the mountains with no opposition, but I'm not sure about that. Unless they have to cross a the river there. Oh shoot, these guys don't have any supplies. Come on, Romania, supply them. A new industrial zone, the good and the bad of that. We'll stop that. And injury support weapons. Okay, now that uh, because of those foreign manpower and whatever we've lost enough leadership there. Well, we're flying supplies in there, which is very good, but I'm going to. Well, let's look at supplies first. Well, we're going to let you fly supplies there a little, a little longer. But here is it? Yeah. Waiting, though, maybe it's because we don't have any supplies. Finland, give them energy? Certainly. Oh, damn, look at all those forces in there. God, I hate units in there. Take forever to dig out. These guys will just swing into that KVD unit. Come on, get supplies. Now we move these guys up here. Well, for now we're going to use them as their interception. And I'll use 
things in passively, but these guys here. Well, I don't have supplies yet. Oh, damn. I'm moving. Even though you don't have any supplies. You won't stay moving for very long. No good, we've got Minsk. Maybe you can move into captured supplies. Might as well get everybody who isn't already going somewhere else need to be attached. I'm second Panzer Division is commanding that. Yeah, that guy, I don't know who he is really, but. It's these sort of, this is sort of what happens is you get these very unfavorable conditions for, I think what they are presuming is like surprise, you know, it's like you didn't know they're there, so you're being ambushed. But I'm hoping that. Okay, you guys here. Move. through that. Oh! Battle in the Baltic took down a submarine. Well, good. Okay, major victory. Excellent. Where was that? Here. Have been here. I don't know. Okay, infantry guns advanced. Nice. We'll just cancel that. There we go. Berlin, Minsk, night train. Because now that we have Minsk, will give us another general bonus to. Okay, so core headquarters are moving fast, so we're gonna 
We get across that river. Well, we won that. This is our headquarters without anything else. There. What do we have? Well, maybe enough to start moving. Now, I want you to go here. To there. guys. Now we need to shift the pair that's, well not you, you, to here. I want to supply that big stack of units. destroyed. Bye bye. I did send some submarines up here because they were somewhat damaged. I wanted to get them home. No. There, except. And I guess I should be holding that down. Yeah. Okay, minus some supplies, but more throughput. Very good. One sort of downside is that is, is if, when, I don't know, um, but the war ends in Russia, we still have that cost going on. Even though no longer need it. And Italy, what do you want? Oh, yes, you can have energy.
Okay, yeah, we can't go into that one, didn't think so. Occupation of empty provinces. Okay, some artillery. Well, um, we can support that attack, I guess. Should maybe stick the artillery with that. That'd be a good idea. Okay, well, since this looks empty and... No, no, these are mountain troops, they attack. Oh, these guys are already attacking. Okay, yeah. Attacking the mountains. No, we don't want to trade with Guatemala. Those guys need these transports. That's probably what I originally intended for them. Let's strategically redeploy them up there, get them there in a reasonable amount of time. In a better amount of time. So I'm moving forward, that's good. Well, let's take a look around some other places here. Okay, so we're penetrating into there. Um, somehow the the Japanese got involved in this. When yeah, how interesting. Okay, I was looking to see if they were still cleaning up a few of the warlords, but we've got the Japanese now. Well, there, with some military police units, they're cleaning up a few of these down here. Nothing really to that could be useful to the Japanese. Out of Ostok, give us some victory points. Towards their collapse, maybe? One. Fifteen points. Ooh, that'd be great if you could do that. Let's... Vladivostok, Allied Objective, Japan. I don't know if that does absolutely any good or not, but... Um, that Fifteen is worth... Would be worth a lot towards... Um, victory. I might just turn this around from being a um, ultimate stalemate. Because what I'm worried, like I said, I, I have not played out either victory or defeat in this. I have played a bit, bit quite a bit more than just now. But um, my sort of worry is, is um, 
can you defeat the Soviet Union? I, you know, I guess you can do a long slog of it, but um, you get mired into this and then get America in the war or whatever and just sort of get stuck here and I don't want to do that. Not with, well, I, you know, the French I'm not worried about. It's the British and the Americans I'm worried about and also worried about Italy getting into the war and bringing the British and the Americans up from the south. That's what I'm worried about. But this will be an interesting thing. Looks like the Manchukuans are moving their army back to Manchukuo. Probably the Japanese will respond, hopefully. Well, we're going to take that opportunity to end this episode. I want to thank you for watching. I want to thank you for liking the videos. I do appreciate it. It helps. And, of course, what really helps is um, questions, comments, suggestions, ideas. Um, just love hearing from you. See you next time for more Hearts of Iron.